Okay, so now we're going to solve an example. It is going to be a lot of algebra, but bear with me. Um, if you do it carefully, you can get it right with no issue. So what the example that we have here is you are going to drink some tea, which is basically just water. And um, you boil the water. And in Bogota, maybe water can boil at 87 degrees. So your boiling water is at 87 degrees. Um, and you have 0 0.25 kilograms, which is about one glass size of water. So you have 20, 0 0.25 kilograms of water at 87 degrees, which is boiling or almost boiling. And you are going to serve the water for your tea into a glass mug. So a mug just like this, but made of glass so that we can find the, the specific heat there. And the glass has a mass of 0, of 0 0.13 kilograms, so just like a normal mat, um, mug. And it's in Bogota, and it's a pretty normal slash hot day, so it's 20 degrees Celsius. Sorry, I didn't write the Celsius, but of course that's important. Uh, this is 87 degrees Celsius and 20 degrees Celsius. So this is a situation that you probably go through every day. Uh, if you drink tea or chocolate or anything, you have water at 87, a glass mug at 20. And the truth is, when you pour that water into the glass, the glass will be cold and it will make the water a little bit colder. So when you drink your tea, it's not going to be at 87 anymore. Maybe it's going to be a little less, maybe at 70, 80, 85, we don't know. So that's what we're going to figure out. We're going to figure out when Thermal equilibrium is reached, which means when both the glass and the mug have reached the final temperature that is the same between both, at what temperature is it? What temperature is the water that you're actually going to drink a couple of minutes later? So let's solve that. So to solve that, we need this equation that we uh, derived at the end, which is M1C1 delta T1, which is all talking about water, and M2C2 delta T2 with a negative, don't forget the negative, which is talking about the glass mug. If you do it backwards, if you put water in two and glass in one, it will give you exactly the same uh, result. You can choose whichever one to be one and whichever one to be two. That doesn't matter. Okay, so now that we got that, we can um, put it into the equation. So what I like to do is organize the information. When I'm given the information, I put it into the values. So for example, we were given, because we were given four numbers and a table of, I don't know, 10 numbers. So it's important to be organized. So 0 0.25 kilograms, that is a mass. And water, which we chose would be one. So this 0 0.25 is M1. 87 degrees Celsius is a temperature, but it's not a change in temperature. It's just the initial temperature. So this is the initial temperature one. Now we've also given the mass of the mug, which is mass two, and the initial temperature, two. On the table, we have two other values, which are, we're gonna need to find the C of water, which is right here. So this is gonna be our C1, the 4,186. And the other one is for glass, because it's a glass mug. So our C2 is right here. Um, 840. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six values. And what are we looking for? We're looking for the final temperature. So we're going to find TF. This is what we uh, are going to find after all of our algebra. So now that we have our information and we know what we have, we can make our equation and start solving it. So remember, we're going to change this delta T to TF minus TI1 and this delta T to Tf minus Ti2. Okay, so now this equation, we're gonna write it all down. So it's M1, C1, Tf minus Ti1 equals M2, C2, Tf minus Ti2. And start plugging in. M1, we find it here, 0 0.25. C1, we find it here, 4,186. Parentheses. TF, that we don't know. TF is what we're finding out. 
so we just leave it as TF. Minus TI1, TI1 was 87 degrees. Equals M2, we have it here, 0 0.13. C2, uh, here, 840. Times TF, which is what we need to find. Oh, God. <laughs> Tf and minus the initial temperature 2, which is 20. So minus 20 degrees. Okay, that's our equation. That's what we need to do. So basically the physics part is over. We did all the physics part correctly. What we need to do now is just math, which is solving this long equation for Tf. So how do we do that? What I like to do first is to multiply these two numbers here and these two numbers here, just to make everything clearer and shorter. So the first part is just 0.25 times 4,186, which gives me um, 1,046.5 times, and I can keep doing this for clarity, Tf minus 87 degrees equals, and now we do the other side, which is point, 0 0.13 times 840, which gives us 109.2, point two times, again, Tf minus 20 degrees. Now, something that you can't forget, can't forget um, from math class is that here you have to do distributive property. I don't know how you call it. Maybe you call it that. But it's if you have a parentheses and a number multiplied by the parentheses, you need to multiply the number times the first one and then times the second one. And the same thing here. This times this and this times this. You can't just multiply it by the first one and forget the other one. So just reminding you a little bit about algebra. So you do that. Um, multiply this times this and then add this times this. So we're going to get 1046.5 times TF. So 1046.5 TF. And then this times this, including the negative. So we put 1046.5 times negative 87 will give us negative 91,045.5. Pretty big number. Don't get scared. You'll always get really big numbers here, but then they'll um, become smaller again as you divide. So negative 91,045.5 equals, so we did this side. Now this one, 1,000, oh sorry, 109.2 times TF will just give you 109.2 TF. And then we do this, the other two in the calculator. So 109.2 times 20, times negative 20. Don't forget the negative. Oh my God, I forgot this negative. Oh God, okay. Um, bear with me. This happens a lot. You don't forget it. So let's put our negative uh, had to go here. So also here, also here, and therefore also here because we did negative 109.2 times TF and now we're going to have to do this one times this one. So that's negative 109.2 times negative 20. Sorry, sorry about that. Um, I don't know why it happened so much. Okay, so that gave me 2184. So because now it's positive, you add uh, 2,184. Okay, so now we're almost there. So we want to solve for TF. So the way we do that is to pass everything that has a TF to the left and everything that doesn't have a TF to the right. So this one has a TF and it's already on the left. We can leave it there. So we have 1,046.5. This is getting <laughs> tiring. TF. And 
we pass this one to the left and this one was negative here so we pass it to add to the other side so plus 109.2 TF on this side and we equal so this one didn't have a TF and it's already on the right so we leave it there and now we have to pass this one which doesn't have a TF to the right so it's subtracting here so we pass it to add here so plus 91.45.5. Okay, we're almost done. Now, on the left side, we have two things that are multiplied by TF, so we can add them together. Because this is like these many apples plus these many apples give you a total number of apples. And that's how I learned it. Um, so we do 1046.5 plus 109.2 gives us. 1,155.7 TF. That's the left side. And the right side, it's finally getting shorter. 2,184 plus 91,045.5 gives us 93,229.5. giant numbers as I told you. Okay, finally, last step of, of the algebra. We have this number multiplied by TF and we want to leave TF alone. So we need to divide this number by this number, pass it down to divide. So finally, the last step is TF is equal to 93,229.5 divided by 1,155.7. That goes into the calculator. And finally, the answer is TF equals 80.67 degrees Celsius. Whew. So I told you it was a lot of algebra. It was a lot of algebra. We actually, well, I actually made a mistake with the negative, um, but fortunately I remembered and fixed it and got an answer. So this is pretty long algebra and many times you're gonna make a mistake. That happens, it's happened to me millions of times. It'll surely happen to you too. So what do you need to do, or I highly suggest that you do, is that you check your answer to see if it makes sense to you physically. So we had water at 87 and we put it into a glass at 20. So it makes no sense that the water would become water at 2000 degrees, that it suddenly heated up and became this really, really hot water that became steam. And it doesn't make any sense that the temperature is now negative. So the water froze because you put it in a glass mug at 20. No. Definitely, the answer has to be between 20 and 87. It can't get colder than the coldest thing, and it can't get hotter than the hottest thing. It has to reach an equilibrium in the middle of the two. Not necessarily in the middle, of course. The problem would be a lot simpler if we were just to find the middle, but um, an equilibrium between those two. So our answer is 80.7, 80.67, which is actually between 20 and 87 and it makes sense that it's closer to 87 because you don't pour the water into your glass and suddenly it becomes like 40 degrees like really cold um it does change a little bit it does get a little bit colder but you still feel still feel it hot in your mouth so this temperature makes a lot of sense so we can say we did the problem correctly when you forget a negative when you pass things to the wrong side when you divide wrong when you do something wrong, you're going to get answers that make no sense. So take that extra 20 seconds to think if your answer makes sense with respect to these two answers. Um, so it's, it's really important to put that physics context, context into the answer because this is not just math. This is physics. So see if it makes sense that the final temperature is that. So that will be the final temperature of T at 87 degrees that you put into a glass mug at 20 degrees here in Bogota.